Part two, slave insurance and how it led to wealth. The ban on the importation of slaves made slaves much more valuable. Skilled slaves were often rented out by slave owners to businesses. Skilled slaves were rented out from anything from railroad construction to firemen to wet nurses as you see here. Slave insurance involved a contract between the slave owner and the insurer in which the insurer would pay out a sum of money in the event of the slave's death. These policies became widespread in southern states especially. Slaveholders began to purchase these policies at large. Slave owners and insurance companies worked together to exploit capitalism by making the utmost profit off of the backs of slaves. Insurance companies would often charge slave owners two times the amount for black slaves. In exchange, slave owners were able to recoup a slave's value once they died. At this time, even banks like Chase and Wells Fargo allowed slave owners to use slaves as collateral. They have since apologized for these actions. Slave owners further increased their wealth by taking out multiple policies on the same slave and further increasing their profits. To put this all into perspective, the average price of a slave in 1850 was $400. In today's prices, that would be about $1,400. On average, slaves were insured for $500 to $700. With multiple policies on a single slave and a $500 policy, that slave owner was looking at $1,500 in profit. In today's standards, that would be equivalent to $53,000. The average slave owner owned from anywhere to 15 to 20 slaves. As you can imagine, this increased their profits significantly, leading to the beginnings of their generational wealth and what we know as old money. This isn't even factoring the profits off of skilled slaves who are often times 15 to 55 percent more valuable than normal slaves. As you could imagine, slave insurance led to extreme profit margins. Part three tomorrow, we'll be getting into generational wealth.